a design and technology team meeting at a school in Birmingham. Here, the head of department is determined to get everyone thinking about sustainability. The first question is, why do it? Why do we need to do sustainable design? What's in it for them? So what I've prepared, we've got some global design discussion cards. And on the back, there are just some quotes I've picked up off websites. Everybody could be working groups, be given one card each, and then they can sort of say, well, what the hell's that got to do with design and technology? And that could be a starting point to get people going. There, right click. Is you could select the bottom of there. Education for sustainable development is now a requirement in Key Stage 3 and 4 DT. Many schools are unsure how to go about it, but Kevin Hull is gaining a national reputation for putting sustainability at the heart of his subject. Reduce, reuse and recycle. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at how to do an environmental evaluation. I strongly believe that what we need is not only do we need to teach students about sustainability, but we need to have sustainable practice ourselves as teachers. We've got to walk the walk as well as talk in the talk. Cockshut Hill Technology College is a large comprehensive in south-east Birmingham. Many of the children in this school come from homes where there's insufficient awareness raised about uh, issues to do with the environment and sustainability. And I don't think many of the young people understand that many of the resources that we've got are finite. And in design, the emphasis being on design, there's insufficient awareness that actually sustainability has to be designed in. And I think what Kevin's doing is raising awareness in a, in a really uh, difficult area. Where could, you, where could you have saved material in that? Where uh, could you have made it smaller? By cutting down on the size of the chair. I think probably one area, if we take this off, one area you could have saved material is on this mild steel yeah. around here. Sustainability is taught from year seven at Cockshut Hill with an 18 lesson project called the Eco Bean Cafe. We're going to be looking at the effects of packaging on the environment. Today we'll focus on fast food packaging, which I'm sure you're all familiar with. And then we're the project is split equally between graphic design and food technology. Nine lessons in each. We invent a cafe in the local vicinity that's just opening. It's got a fair trade theme in that they're selling fair trade products to improve the lives of others and increase their profits, obviously. Um, and then also all their packaging is environmentally sound. So we look at the design of all that. We look at the ethical issues behind fair trade and social impact. Just a few small changes to this graphic design lesson also get the children thinking about the environmental impact of packaging. First of all, the students get given out resource packs, which are both visual and uh, literacy resources, where they look at generic waste facts, which just opens their eyes to just how much waste is occurring in this country and the world as a whole. Britain throws away 27 million tonnes of rubbish every year. This weighs the same as three and a half million double-decker buses and would stretch one and a half times round the world. Whoa. Did you think we threw away that much stuff? No. No, why not? Some people recycle it mostly. Do you think, from that fact though, do you think a lot of people are recycling? No. 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 So that's why we've got a need here to learn about it, haven't we? So you could go away and teach your parents now. The children work on the specifications for their own takeaway packaging. The students have to do a simple card sort where they look at a key term and match a definition to that term. Environment. How your design will affect the environment. But we need to look at the design of the package that we're going to make tomorrow. So what do we need to think about? We should make it recyclable, like easy to recycle. Brilliant, OK. The main one we'll look at tomorrow is using something that can be recycled, like cardboard. Yeah. OK, and not using too much of the material either. Yeah, because like, if the more card we use, the more trees we knock down. Well, that's it. Yeah, brilliant. Well done. The food technology component involves designing and making cakes for the cafe using fair traded ingredients from around the world. What we're doing here, I'm just putting out the atlases for them and they've got, I'm going to give them a card as they come in, which will give them a country and a product that they've got to find and plot on a world map themselves and colour it in for me. You need to look it up in the index at the back. 
So if you look at the country in the back, what have you got? Ghana. So you look at Ghana. Well, G comes before M, doesn't it? All right, where are we? Can you find Ghana on there? You've got Egypt. Do you know where Egypt is, Michael? No. You don't? So if you look it up in the back... Take the things out of the envelope. The next task is to research background information on fair trade. Read through the fact sheets. All these facts that I've got you there have come off websites. A better deal for growers in developing countries. Have you put that? Yeah. The way in which they're learning from it is they're actually becoming aware of what's on the supermarket shelves and who's getting a fair price for their products. And it's making them really aware of the third world countries that perhaps aren't getting as much as they should do for what they're producing for us and what we're, we're taking for granted, really. What does pa-pa-pa mean? No, I've it got it here. Here. Because that's the company, isn't it? The Kuapa yeah. Koo... Koo I can't it's the slogan. And what does their slogan mean? It means... Best of, the best. best of the best. So that could be a fact, wouldn't it? And what do they grow? Have you found out what this particular company grow? Cocoa. Cocoa. That's right. And what do you think they do with the money that they get for it? I don't know. What do you think they're going to do? Buy when we tools, look, buy food. Buy food, buy tools. What you're going to do, this is a nice bit, you're going to have a go at tasting some chocolate. You get one go at tasting it, you've got to... Write in your smiley face, and if you want to, write a little bit about it, what you think of the flavour. There we go, girls. Pupils get the chance to investigate the ingredients with tasting sessions. For the majority, it's their first taste of fair trade chocolate. Creamy, crispy. No, write a bit about it, like put it's creamy, whatever it is. So how easily do Year 7s take on board the issues around sustainability? I think they are interested in, in trying to make the world fairer. They come up with the... You, you ask them what fair trade is, it's where the farmer gets a right price for his product. But I don't know whether they actually appreciate the, the whole world issue around it and why companies pay what they pay and whether they actually understand the economics of it, I don't know. We try and keep the message in Year 7 very simple. We don't introduce the term sustainability. We talk about environmental design and looking after our environment. And as we progress through the years, then the, we start to tailor the language. So by the time students get to year 11, they are talking in terms of sustainability. It's a really, really good, quick and easy way of evaluating a product without having to do too much writing at all. OK? The department has learnt from experience that the earlier sustainable issues are raised, the better. I think Year 7s are so keen and enthusiastic, they really take it on board. They start coming up with ideas of how they can improve things in their own lives as well. Hopefully in a few years, every year group will be environmentally aware. Actually, oh look, I've just spotted you guys on the environmental thing. It's a biodegradable material, so I'm thinking this is fairly safe, yeah? We originally brought it in at year 13, and I found a lot of my time was being taught, used to teaching sustainable issues, and it was getting in the way of me teaching design, and it was in, getting in the way of me teaching make. So what we tried to do is bring it in at year seven so the students had an understanding of it, with the idea that by the time they get into key stage four, they are doing, and it is second nature to them, so we don't keep having to go over why sustainability. The Year 10 and 11 design project is based on the three R's. Reduce, reuse, recycle. Kevin encourages his students to use salvaged scrap material. This example of this girl, I gave her these four pots and said, you're stuck for a project, design around those four pots. And she came up with the idea of a story, uh, a jewellery pot for young girls. And she came up with the idea of giving this, this animal but it was her idea. I just gave her the pots and said, get on with it. Uh, I was trying to make an environmentally friendly planter. So I used wood, which I got from a pallet, which I found on the school grounds, just lying about. And I used the metal shelf supports, which were just also lying around. So it's all free kind of material, which is good. This is why this project works on lots of different levels, because it does empower me to give students a starting point and put something in front of them and said, design around this, 
reuse that. But other students are quite happy and they go away and they quite happily go through the methodical process of design, 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 research. And I think sustainability does give teachers that option. It gives them the idea of being able to give something as a focal point and as a starting point or take a more traditional route where the students come about it themselves. But what about the extended usefulness? As the project nears its end, Kevin guides the students through an environmental evaluation. This back part stops your CDs falling out the back. These metal poles stop your CDs sliding off the edge. The waste, when you drilled these holes out, has been used here. I'm, and that is you being used as your connecting part. I don't see how you could have reduced the amount of material you've done in that any further. You could have made that into a one unit because it's got the all-thread and the aluminium cover. OK, so what you could have done is taken, instead of using mild steel there inside an aluminium collar, you've made that one out of aluminium. Yeah. Solves a genuine problem, five out of five. Students five five who choose five. not to use salvaged materials yeah, still have to ensure their products use assembled. materials economically and are eco-friendly. Why have you given four out of five for this one, for the materials, the small amount? Um, this one? This one. It uses a lot of wood which can be recycled. So how could we have reduced the amount of wood you used in that? Where could we have cut down on the amount of wood? Um, here. And could have made it thinner. You couldn't, right, OK, it's good point. Right. The department even has a recycling room. Right, this is the EcoPod. So the idea is we've brought in lots of aluminium bins and all the offcuts from the practical work goes into the bins and then students are encouraged to come in here and source their materials from these bins for projects. So if we come uh, in here, we've got lots of offcuts from vacuum forming. So what these have done is cut down, used for walls in modelling when we're doing architectural modelling. Uh, we also cut them up into strips and provide primary schools with um, glue spreaders. These sorts of offcuts of plastic, which are no good to us, We'll just cut down on the bandsaw into 10 mil squares and we'll send them out as mosaic tiles so primary schools can do artwork with it. And then the idea for this area is we want to get the students more involved. We want to set up battery collection points for the community. Uh, we collect all the printer cartridges from across the school. Uh, we collect, we've got waste paper bins in here. Uh, we'll do aluminium can recycling. We've got links to charity. We'll take our aluminium cans off us. The school has already begun buying in sustainable materials and is working towards applying for an Eco Schools Award. But Kevin is aware that there's still plenty to learn. Just because we've been going down the path of sustainability, we haven't got all the answers. It's still a new process to us. We're evolving as we go along. We're finding out more as we go along. As people are starting to find out we're doing sustainability, I'm starting to get con people contacting me with ideas, people contacting me with questions. So as the network opens up, our practice is constantly changing. We're constantly getting new ideas. And for the yeah, students, excellent. the message is clearly getting across. I don't know about you, but every time something that's been thrown away that was plastic in my house, I kept it for this product. And it just, you just noticed you was keeping things that you wouldn't even think about, but that could be cut to use. More schools were to do this kind of thing, then more kids would realise, and then the next generation of people would be more aware of it. And it'll influence other kids then, like, younger than us, and they'll want to be able to do it, and they'll teach their kids, and then more people will start recycling, because everything's going to waste at the moment, like petrol and yeah. running out of it. Starting to think about the future more as well, aren't you? Like, what world are we going to live in, like, in yeah. the next 30-odd years, yeah. yeah.